This week on World in America, we'll visit the Jamaican Americans. One million strong, Jamaican Americans have given this country many well-known authors and musicians. This week, we'll take a peek into their lives, challenges, and how they contribute to life here in America. I would consider myself Jamaican-American because I enjoy what America has to offer, but still I try to keep my Jamaican tradition. We are a group of people who are dedicated, hardworking, a little bit proud, uh, but are really trying to make, uh, you know, in general, a better life for themselves. We have always strived to be very good Americans. We have assimilated into the American culture, and although we try to maintain our own identity, that we are Americans and we believe in the values of this country. We are ready actually to contribute uh, to the society in, in every way. The harder we work, the better this country will become and that we all have a part in building and making America great. Fifty miles wide and 150 miles long, Jamaica is an island located in the Caribbean Sea. About five millennia ago, the Arawak and Taino people settled on the island. It was they who called the island Haimaka, meaning the land of wood and water. In 1494, Christopher Columbus landed on the island and claimed it for Spain. The Spanish control continued for about 150 years. Then, in 1655, the English took control of the island and kept it until 1962, when Jamaica became independent. Today, Jamaica is a Commonwealth nation under Queen Elizabeth II as the head of state. During the first 200 years of British rule, there was constant traffic of Africans enslaved in Jamaica, making the island a leader in sugar exportation. This heavy flow to keep up with the market resulted in Africans being the majority of the country by far. More than 90% of Jamaicans are of African ancestry, followed by Indian and Chinese ethnicities due to importation of indentured laborers from these countries after the abolition of slavery. Jamaican existence goes a long way back. For the same reason Africans were brought to Jamaica, some of them were also transported to the United States. Like it or not, we started migrating to the United States as indentured servants back in the early 1600s. Then came slavery, and um, through the, the, the slave trade, J Jamaicans started coming here. They were in Jamaica, and they were brought here as, uh, as slaves. However, Mass migration of Jamaicans to the United States did not take place until the 1960s. In the 60s, the mass wave of migration to the United States happened then for Jamaicans. And we started seeing the, the wave of Jamaicans coming into the United States. They came for various reasons, obviously for prosperity. Currently, the United States has one of the largest percentages of the Jamaican diaspora. About a million Jamaicans live in the States and around 20,000 Jamaicans become permanent residents each year. There are a number of famous Jamaican Americans, namely actor Harry Belafonte, singer Alicia Keys, former head of state Colin Powell, NBA star Patrick Ewing, to name a few. One family that came during the biggest Jamaican migration were the Langs. Living in Piscataway, New Jersey, with their four beautiful daughters, they remind us of another happy family. The Langs are almost the Jamaican Huxtables. 
migrated to the United States in October 1979, uh, right after I finished high school. My mom had migrated uh, ahead of us to kind of make a better life. I'm a family physician. I did college and medical school in the U.S. As a family physician, I really take care of uh, all age groups, children, uh, all the way up to adults. I came to America in um, March 1987. I got married, my husband was here, so naturally I had to come and join him. I do a little bit of everything. I mean, I take care of the kids. I used to work in retail, I did a little bookkeeping. I mean, I do, I do a lot of stuff. Right now, I'm a college student at Rutgers Newark. I'm going to my third year in September. I'm a marketing major. I'm the oldest of four girls. Just like many other Jamaican immigrants, the opportunities are what brought the Langs to the United States. Well, whatever it is that you aspire to, here in the United States, there's no obstacle. If you want to overcome and to make something of yourself, you can do that. The opportunity that they have to be able to excel in, in whatever, if they put that time in, because, you know, the, the thing that is uh, most liked. America is the land of opportunity, and in my opinion, will always remain so. Um, you have freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of choices, whatever those choices may be, and an opportunity for anyone, anyone to grow and to excel and to become the best that they can be. Scataway is a really diverse town, so we have like everything. There's a lot of Indians, there's lots of Jamaicans and other island people and all kinds of people here. I think people like, you know, to just to see something different from Jamaica. I guess people hear about America so much and they just wanted to get here. So when they come, they, you know, go to the malls and see, you know, just the different scenery and just to see life in America, the difference. I remember the snow coming down and my mom saying, it's, the snow is falling and we all ran out the house and we were just like basking in the snow. We were freezing, but we've never seen snow before. And come winter time, they come and see the snow and they're so excited to go back and tell everybody that they've seen snow. It was heavenly. It was just awesome to feel the snow, to touch the snow, to taste the snow. While the snow is enjoyable, the cold winter months have been the number one concern for Jamaicans when migrating to the States. You're in Jamaica, you're used to sunshine all around. We came here December 16th. And we came in the heart of winter. We have never seen snow, never knew what it was like to be cold away from the refrigerator being cold. And we kept on saying as children, oh my God, this is one big giant ice box. Because <laughs> we could not believe that anyone could withstand this kind of cold weather. Honeymoon, Dad. Yeah, you too. You went around in the The unknown was in the camera. That looks like Anthony. And that's Jonathan in front. The afro. Yeah, see? Pace is a little bit slower, you know, just in general. I mean, everything you do is a little bit slower in the islands. Uh, so I think they had to, you know, transition into a little bit faster paced society. For migrants, miscommunication can always be a hurdle, and even funny at times. Even though the official language in Jamaica is English, they are not completely immune to small misunderstandings. I remember being here and somebody saying, the slang at the time, or one of the slangs at the time was, get out of here, and I, and I was insulted, because you just told me to get out of here. You know, the lady was making a comment and she said, oh, get out of here. And we, we said, get out of here. That means you're not welcome. It's time for you to leave. So we started to leave because she said, get out of here, not knowing that that was one of the slangs or the terms at the time. <laughs> the Langs and other Jamaican Americans try their best to keep the essence of their heritage alive while melting into the mainstream United States. 
He didn't have to be told to do something more than once. Once was enough. And we would get the look and we know exactly what that means. They didn't have to do much talking, but today it's different. So trying to instill that in them. Let it be once, and if we look, you should know what it means, and don't let us have to say it a second time. For example, if I'm in the house and my mom calls me and I don't say yes, mom, or yes, or something, then she'll keep calling me until I say it properly. <laughs> my father taught me this, that you always cook and make sure you cook enough because you never know who's going to stop by. You must have something for them to eat. So when you're cooking, you cook as if you're expecting company. I want it. <laughs> the Langs are lucky to have Grandma in the house. She keeps the storytelling tradition alive by sharing her experiences with her grandchildren. One week I came home and Sharon was cleaning up the house. I was ironing. She came to me and she said, Grandma, I feel like I want to scream. <laughs> and I said, why? I'm bored. I want to go outside and scream. I said, OK, well, you have to let me finish this. She go to the door and she sat down and she waited until I finished and come to her. And she, I said, you still want to go? Yes, Grandma, I want to go scream. So I opened the door and I let her out. The minute her foot hit the ground, she started running and screaming. I had to stop my ears. <laughs> Doing their best raising their four children, maintaining their traditions and customs, and being productive participants of the larger society the Langs represent the Jamaican-American family at its best. Uptown Manhattan is your address if you're craving for some authentic Jamaican cuisine. Mo Bay is the place to be for delectable Jamaican dishes. Mobe Uptown is my restaurant. It's a family-owned business, my mother and I. Uh, basically, the food is eclectic or a mixture or different in somewhat because it has the Chinese influence behind it. No Jamaican breakfast is complete without a hearty ackee and saltfish. Or traditional the national dish. Aki can be purchased in the store, should be purchased in the store, it's imported. It's a cross between a fruit and a vegetable. Most people do describe it as scrambled eggs. It looks like scrambled eggs, but definitely has a very unique flavor. It's traditionally done with the codfish known as bacalao. We boil the codfish because it's salted. You boil it several times, changing the water to remove all the excess salt. In a small saucepan, you add some oil. You're gonna put in there some onions, red peppers, green peppers, thyme, pimento seeds, and don't forget our scotch bonnet pepper. Okay, to this we're going to add the codfish. Let all the flavors absorb. Next item to add is your tomatoes because you don't want to overcook. There's nothing like Jamaica. There's nothing like the Jamaican food. There's nothing like the Jamaican culture. You know we feel all right. <laughs> Add to it the ackee. Gently now fold. Do not stir because as you see, 
It's extremely delicate, as the motto says, out of many one people, therefore we're very diverse and very culturally mixed. And that is reflected in our food. Just smile and be happy. Perfect. Perfect. Viva la aquí. <laughs> and codfish. What do I want it? All the way. No times, you know we feel all right. The king of Jamaican cuisine is the Escovitch fish. Fried to perfection with fragrant, earthy spices, this dish is a must-have. The most traditional dishes in, in, in Jamaica is Escovitch fish. Usually we use a whole snapper. Your basic seasoning, a little salt, Make sure you season it inside and out because that's going to be basically all the seasoning you use. A little cayenne pepper. Let's rub it up. Give the fish some love, as they say. What you're going to do is basically fry the fish very, very dry. And what is going to accent and bring all the flavors out in the fish is the escoviche sauce. Okay, here in the restaurant we use our deep fryer. Place fish in, drop it in. Make sure again the oil is 350 degrees. What you want to make sure is that you fry the fish very dry. That's the secret, so it's nice and crunchy. One of the best compliments that you can give is that once you finish the snapper, we don't know what you have. Bones and everything is gone. In the meantime, what we're going to do is to do our escovish sauce. Vinegar, pinch of salt, scotch bonnet pepper, key element in our island in Jamaican cooking is our scotch bonnet pepper. If you put a real Jamaican scotch bonnet pepper to the nose, you definitely know or have to stand back because the flavors are so intense. Some cauliflower carrots. What this is going to create is like a pickle or pickling sauce. Once you have the liquid heated, you just add the ingredients. All you're trying to do is to create a nice sauce and the vegetables to still maintain their crispiness. I like to, to absorb the extra oil, put it on some paper towel. That way, it's nice and crunchy. I'm gonna be plating in a um, banana leaf. Very, very typical in Jamaica. I like to display it whole. Some people don't like the head, but you know, they're missing a lot when they don't eat the head. That's the best part, actually. They say closer to the bone, the sweeter the meat. The sauce that was sitting is now your escovish sauce. Basically what you do, you want to pour it over the fish. As when anyone who goes to Jamaican experience, even on the roadsides, there are people cooking. The culture is just so rich. Part of the experience in Jamaica is to really experience the culture of the people, which is reflected in their food. A people that achieved their independence less than 50 years ago, Jamaicans make sure to remember the day they became completely free. It's no different for Jamaican Americans. John Jay, the Jamaican Organization of New Jersey, organizes a flag raising day annually at the City Hall of East Orange. Very proud of my country, and I know that you are too. You know, God has been good to us, and we need to continue to work together. I'm very pleased to be at this event today. We are celebrating the 47th year of Jamaica's anniversary and this is a significant step for us as a country. Welcome to this, our fifth, the Jamaica Organization of New Jersey's fifth year raising Jamaica's flag here in East Orange. Very important event for Jamaicans. This is our fifth year in raising our flag, the Jamaica's flag above City Hall in East Orange. And when it's raised, it symbolizes uh, a lot to Jamaicans. Atichibabo! Somebody, ma!
This is a nostalgic event, I, I would say, first and foremost, because it, 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 it renews a sense of pride, a sense of history. Keep us free from evil powers. Be our light through countless hours. We are here this afternoon to remember Jamaica land we love, the pride that we have here, also not forgetting the roots from which we have come. It symbolizes independence, where we came into our own as a people, you know, and it's something that we have to remember. The Jamaican community is galvanizing. Uh, there are second and third generation Jamaicans growing up in the United States and it's vitally important that we connect them to uh, our past, to our great heritage, our great culture. And uh, so the young people can become as, uh, as organized as, as we're trying to be here. Just like the Scotch Bene pepper that adds a spicy touch to any dish, Jamaican Americans spice up life for everyone in the U.S. with their passionate attachment to their values, their delicious cuisine, and most of all, their ever-present cheer. Baby.